My name is Lima Bowie. I'm from Liberia. I live and work in Accra, Ghana. I am one of the founders and executive director of the Women, Peace and Security Network Africa. It's a program, it's a women's, women's focus and women's led organization that seek to increase the participation of women in um, peace and security leadership and governance in Africa. What we do in our day-to-day -day work is to s try to um, bring issues of peace and security governance on the table for women, train them so that they are actively involved and help them. So what we want to do, because a lot of the work, the peace and security work that women do are ad hoc, spur of the moment kind of organizing at the community level. So we are trying to institutionalize peace and security governance for women in Africa. So when I say that, what I'm trying to say is that we're trying to have trained women as negotiators, trained women to be on the table, but also trained women to be in the, around in a discussion around security sector reform which has a lot to do with um, human rights and justice issues because um, most of the issues that led to some of the civil wars in Africa had to do with bad governance, abuse of human rights and all of these things. The security sector is one of those um, areas that is basically to restructure all of the security apparatus but with the involvement of civil society for accountability. So it's supposed to take into consideration all of these human rights issues that led to the war in the first place and see how civil society and um, government can work together for more accountability from the size of um, the security agency. So in our work, when we're saying we're chatting a course for women in security sector processes, it means we want them to sit down help to, to draw out some of the strategies on security to ensure that those issues on human rights, human security are taken into consideration. That's the kind of thing that we do day to day, trying to see how women have a voice mm. in all of the processes that will lead to sustainable peace and development. Peace building is a process, it's not an event. And what we've come to understand is that sometimes the process is slow and painful. For me, I'm a Christian and I'm a Lutheran. It takes the love of God to get you out of the bed every morning to face the perpetrators of injustice. It takes the love of God to, 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 to positively engage these people to see reason why um, they should give peace a chance in countries where there are conflicts. It takes your feet to just see that tomorrow is going to be better because the word of God says it, you know. And one thing I've realized um, in my work as a peace activist, when Christ was on this earth and he encountered and engaged the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of these um, teachers of the laws, quote unquote, in the conventional way now, um, he boldly taught me in his walk that tyranny never wins. Mm. Peace always overcomes. Goodness always overcomes evil. And because I know that there's someone who has set that trend for me, I can wake up every morning no matter how frustrating it is and I probably say to I always say to myself maybe not in my lifetime but peace will overcome yeah one story that has stuck on my mind was a time we went to um, one of the internally displaced camps um, we developed something we call sharing of the weight um, where women come together to share their experiences because we don't have the, the, the resources and the finances to see psychologists or trauma experts so we've designed that as part of our program in those years when I worked in Liberia and there was this day we went to the displaced camp we had like 50 women we went outside of the camp in a little shelter where we sat to share our experiences of the war. And 
from one person to the other was stories of violence and pain and shame and grief and the tears we got to a particular point where I couldn't take it anymore because the tears was just too much in the room so as the lead facilitator announced it to the women let's stop it's okay and then one of the older women very old women rose up on her walking stick and said to me don't let us stop see the UN has brought us food and shelter and clothes see but what you've brought us today is much more valuable than anything they've given us you've come to listen to the stories from our bellies stories that no one would ask us about Please don't stop. And for me, that at the end of the day, it, it told a lot to me. But the final conclusion that I gave that is to myself. Don't stop what you do. Don't ever stop what you do. Because you will encounter a lot of women like that old lady in that camp. Who would otherwise have not had the opportunity to speak out for peace. So for me, it's every time you want to give up, you hear that voice. Don't stop. Every time you get disappointed when you, the donors don't approve a grant, you want to give up, you want to find yourself a good job, a better, a, a well-paid job, and you hear, yeah, don't stop. Because you've come with something much more precious than what a lot, a lot of people have given us. So that for me, that is the drive. Hmm for the work that I do. Yeah. You can never talk about my human rights if my welfare, if I don't have food, if I don't have clothing, if almost 80% uh, 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 um, um, of my population is in poverty and 20% live in total wealth. Where you have one group who can barely find water to, to take their bath or to drink and you have one group in a society like myself who has so much water to the point of watering your grass till water flows out in the street what good is a human rights declaration if you have that kind of inconsistency in the livelihood of people they will always be rich and poor people but i think the maker of this earth didn't do it in a way that everyone should suffer so yes these documents are good but the ability for people to make them hands-on effective for the everyday lives of people so there is this contradiction while we have a declaration of human rights a lot of us are taking sides with these governments that are really not doing anything for the ordinary people but because it is in the interest of the world leaders maybe there's a little oil there or maybe there's a little diamond there or maybe there's timber that we need or maybe there's rubber that we need for example take Liberia for a hundred plus years the Firestone rubber plantation has operated in one of the worst settings people live in huts that are only fit for families of five six seven eight nine ten there has never ever been a single denouncement by the government of the US on the operations of Firestone. So take it from global to local. Mm -hmm. In their practices, these big companies come and they commit the worst human rights abuses in local context. But well, because they have the backing of their governments, no one says anything. So yes, while we celebrate the human rights declaration, let's make them effective for ordinary people. If you have all of these churches who are, especially Christian churches who are following the doctrine of Christ, he was one of the greatest human rights defenders that ever walked the face of this earth. He challenged structures. He challenged authorities. He challenged those who were, whilst he respected authority and governance, he challenged them to their faces. When, when he talked about vipers, hypocrites 
and all of these things. The sad state of our churches now is that maybe, let me not be unfair, but most of them are about siding with governments. Mm. So it becomes difficult for them to speak against human rights abuses because also in the church you find it. How, you ask me, when you don't cater to the poor in your midst, you have churches who are satisfied every year to report that in our bank account we have five million dollars while you have people in your congregation who cannot even find food to eat is that then you sit and write a long 300 page document and say human rights abuses in the world start from within so it is very important that the church speak but not just with their voice through their actions 